Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Good Owl Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some of the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So I'm going to try and turn these list videos on their heads and today we're going to talk about the five least played games in my collection. <laughs> So normally when you look at board game videos that are lists, um, they're normally the top something of something. You know, the top 100 games in my collection or the top 10 scary games or whatever it might be. And I have decided to do the opposite with this. Um, I wanted to look at the games that I played the least in my collection, but were still in my collection. So there's something you need to know about me. Um, and that is that I certainly play a lot of games and I buy a lot of board games, but I do not keep a lot of board games. I'm very aggressive with um, my collection and keeping it kind of trim and tidy. Um, I could have a lot more games than I do, but I don't keep around things that I don't think I'll play or I don't think I'll enjoy. So the point of this list is really to show you that there are games that I am not playing, but I still think they are so good that they are worth keeping for those rare moments when they are playable. So yeah, I'm sure you've got some of these yourself. I definitely want to hear what yours are. What games are you holding on to despite them never getting played? Um, and we're going to jump right in with number one. Okay, so we're not really starting with number one on the list. That would not be very fun. But we are going to start with the first item on the list, which is number five. Um, and this is Captain Sonar from Matago Games. And Captain Sonar is a game in which you kind of need a, a decent number of people to play and you split yourself into two teams and who then are basically in rival submarines. And the aim of the game is to sink each other's submarine. How this works is that you've got this big board in the middle of the table so you can't see what the other side are doing. You kind of split yourselves up and everybody has their own role to perform on the ship so someone will be the navigator and it's up to them to mark where um, the enemy goes um, someone will be the captain someone will be able to fire the torpedoes and someone will be able to repair the ship um, so already you can see this needs a good number of players for it to you know to act really function um, and the fun part of this game of course is when you know the enemy side ca calls out its movement so it'll be like we go north we go west we go south and you draw this in on your own map and then you're trying to place that over the map of the game and figure out where they might be and go and sink them. There are special maneuvers and things you can do as well, but mostly what this game is about is role playing being in a submarine. Um, this really brings out accents in people I've always found and it is just such a blast to play. It's like playing snake in a sense where you're trying to figure your way out around the map where they might be. And even if you found them, there are chances they can get away too. Um, it always, I think is such a, a fun kind of party game to to play and I think it's a blast when you get people really into it you know it takes a bit of time to play it takes a, a lot of people you you want eight people really to play this and I have managed to do so at birthday parties and things like that I think Captain Sona is a really special game that's both an experience and a, a game kind of at the same time um, I think it's a really really fun one and for sure who doesn't want to pilot their own submarine um, and you know come out victorious so I highly recommend Captain Sona Sonar, despite having not played it in a very long time. Yeah, I want to say like four or five years, I think it's been, and I still have no desire to get rid of it out of my collection because that day will come where we have enough humans to come and man our submarines. Yeah, so, so that's number five, Captain Sonar. So number four on this list is what I would consider to be a pretty popular game. And I'm surprised it's all the way down here, but I will explain why in a moment. And this is Codenames from CGE. Um, Codenames is a fantastically cool kind of word guessing game in which you are on a team with somebody else. So you need, you need a team of people to play this. And there are an array of words placed down in front of you and someone's gonna give you a clue and they need you to select the words that they were thinking of that relate to the clue. Um, of course, it's not always that easy because there are words that you shouldn't touch at all. And if you do, you'll lose the game. It's based around the idea of 
spies sending secret information to each other. Um, and then the other team has to do the same and whoever solves all of their words before the, and before the game ends is the winner. Um, so Codenames is pretty well known as a, a really great game with kind of gamers or, fam or families or non-gamers alike. It's just, it's just fun and lots of people understand word games very well and Codenames is a fantastic game. Um, the reason I've not played it at all really is not actually to do with the player count, it's to do with the fact that I now own Codenames Duet, which is the two player only version. So if you liked Codenames and wished you could play it just you and someone else, well here's your chance. Um, I will point out that Codenames Duet I think has much harder words in it than just regular Codenames, which was confirmed to me by the CGE Twitter account at one point. Um, but it is still that fun kind of puzzly game except it's a different kind of back and forth going on. Um, so yeah, I still have Codenames in my collection and I've played Codenames Duet more than Codenames. But yeah, I guess that's because I kind of replaced it. I don't know if I should get rid of Codenames now that I think about it. But um, yeah, should, should I ever have a group of people around in future, um, Codenames I suppose can make its surprise appearance. Yeah. All right, on to the next number. So number three on the list that has survived the chop is Guillotine. Um, so, guillotine. Do have people heard of this one before? Um, I, this is here for sentimental purposes, but I'll tell you what it's about. So, guillotine is a game in which it's kind of set in France around the time of you know we're chopping everyone's heads off, um, Marie Antoinette style. And yeah, it's pretty much it. It's a there's a bunch of nobles in a, a row leading up to the guillotine, and at the end of each turn, the noble at the top of the row will be killed, and you get to put them and their points into your pool of points and you're trying to earn the most points. Um, the aim of the game really is that you are rearranging the line that's leading up to the guillotine in order so that you can get the, the best points or prevent someone else getting the best points. Um, looking back on it now, this is a very gruesome and probably inappropriate theme for a game. I don't think I would have bought it these days, but there's a very special reason I own this. Um, and this is because this is the first board game I ever asked kind of bought for myself, right? Um, and this because I saw it at a convention. Um, I saw it at Dominicon years ago. And in it is a card with my name. There's a Marie Antoinette card. And I'm like, oh my God, there's a card with my name. My name does not appear often in things. It is too long and awkward. But I was so excited and I was like, I want to own this game with my card in it. And so sure enough, I do. Do I pull this game out to show people? Not really. Um, I think we've come a long way from um, playing Guillotine. I still think it's quite a fun game, despite its, its unusual theme, but it's here pretty much entirely for sentimental purposes. Um, so yeah, so that is why I have not played Guillotine in some time, but why it's still in the collection. All right, let's move on, next number. So number two on this list is Part Travesty. Yeah, mostly travesty. Um, it's a shame this game doesn't get played more. Um, and so this is Robo Rally, um, so, which is designed by Richard Garfield, you may know from Magic the Gathering fame. Um, and this is probably one of the oldest games in our house. My husband had this game before he met me, so a long time ago. Robo Rally is a programming game in which you are a robot in a factory that's trying to kill you. And you need to navigate your way around the board to get to the flags before everyone else or before the board pushes you over the edge, hits you with laser beams or some other player tries to kill you. And on your turn, you're able to place down five moves and the moves are things like rotate, turn left, go forward three spaces, you know those games. And then as you interfere with each other, you can lose those spaces so there's less things you could do or bad things can happen where your things might get stuck so you're stuck with the same moves every time. Um, it's quite the vicious game. It can take a really long time to play if people are very determined. Um, but overall, I think it's just real fun. It's one of those classics, I think, around here that Robo Rally has been going a really long time. Um, now, the reason we're not playing Robo Rally is probably twofold. Um, the first of which is it has a reputation for taking a long time to play around here because people are very serious about it um, and whatnot. The second reason is that my husband's really, really good at it. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's like undefeated at Robo Rally. Um, which is mad because it is quite random at parts, but no, he's just very good at it. So people are less inclined to want to play it when they know they're not going to win. It's a bit of a mess, isn't it? I don't know if you guys have games like that at home. The ones no one will play because they can't win. 
Mm. But um, as far as it goes, Robo Rally has a, a place in our heart. It's been the oldest game, the funnest game. And occasionally at Christmas, we'll be able to convince somebody to give it a try with us for a while. Um, but it's a crackingly good game. It's chaotic and, and hilarious and does involve a little bit of planning as well. Um, so I can definitely recommend Robo Rally, especially with the right group of players. It'll be really, really good. Um, and this is one I really wish we played more of. Yeah, I, I absolutely do. Maybe I'll keep an eye on it and see, can I wrangle someone else into having a game? So that's number two. Um, are you ready for number one? Do you want to make a guess at what it is? Three, two, one. Let's go see. Okay, so number one. Um, I'm a bit ashamed to admit this because I really, really like this game, but it kind of, it slips through the cracks a little bit. So... I don't know about you folks, but the games that are least played in my house are usually racing games. And that's because my husband loves a good racing game. But racing games usually require, you know, having people to come visit and play with you as well. And um, we don't always have access to, you know, lots of other people. So they all get put aside. But this is the one that got pushed the furthest down. And I'm sad because it's awesome. And this is Snow Tales. Um, and Snow Tales is a game I wanted for the longest time. I think I saw it on a Shut Up and Sit Down video and the notions of having dog sledding was just too exciting. So Snow Tales, yes, is a game that's kind of based on the Iditarod where you have a sled with dogs pulling it and it's a race around the board and you have to be careful on the turns and you have to speed up and slow down your dogs in the kind of have them be the, the right numbers so that, you know, you're... Um, you don't wobble around the place and things like that in your sled um, and it's just it's just fun and I always have a bit of a soft spot for a game with dogs in it so that's just cool um, you know and it's a it's a nice looking game and it's very it's very fun to play um, but as I said the problem with race games is you kind of want people so like this has fallen down with Formula D um, and whatnot and kind of we've a selection of race games but I, I feel the worst about this one because I think it is it is just nice and fun and easy and it just got a good feel about it. It's got a good vibe game and I, I definitely think more people should try it out including me apparently. So yeah I was appalled to find this was at the bottom of my list of lists shameful stuff so I may do something about it um but yeah so snow tails is down the the, the the bottom of my list I wonder can I change these around and come back in a couple of months and see where everything ended up um but for now like it it's obvious why some of these games are here but the important thing is that I haven't got ridden ridden I haven't got rid of any of them um, and I think that's because these are still stupendously good games. They just require very specific circumstances to be played. Um, so that is the list. Those are my five least played games that I still own and have not got rid of over many, many different culls over the years. These have still remained. Um, so I want to know what's in the bottom of your list. What's the least played games you've got and why are they there? And is it time to take them from the bottom of the list to the top of the list? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll tune in for some future videos. Um, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so that you know you can know when new videos are out. You might want to know that. Um, and as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.